So today we're gonna change the lights in the shop area right here. And then we're also going to do some more fixturing tools. And so I'm gonna explain uh, why I'm making them the way I'm making them and how they're gonna help with my new uh, welding table layout. So I uh, found these at my local hardware store. Should be interesting to see the color difference between what we've got now and what these are. So That bulb got everywhere. Down to that end of the garage, underneath everything. Might take me a while to sweep it up. Oh, hey, shout out to you students who wear your boots like that. Totally forgot. Let's fix that. Fix that. All right, so I've got these bolts that I bought. I bought seven eighths and one inch bolts. I bought the one inch knowing that they would fit in, but I also bought the seven eighths not knowing exactly how tight that would be. I recently updated my table. I connected two to three slats with some one by one solid bar. The reason why, as much as I tried to make sure each of the posts that held individual slats was perpendicular, some had a little bit of variation and on the angularity of it. So some of these slats would twist and there was no way for me to twist them back. By connecting two slats together, I can drop one side or raise another and create a fairly level surface. And just by doing this, and I haven't really gone back through and adjusted it, but it's way flatter than it was with the individual slats. And so I'm really excited about that. So some of these you can slide all the way down. Others you'll have to pin together and slide in the bolt together, right? So what I wanna do to make some more fixturing point, I noticed this with the window well, um, but some of the angles that I was doing weren't near a slat. And I knew this would be a problem coming up. Um, I kind of knew how I wanted to solve it, but now I've got time to solve it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut probably like a five inch chunk of these pieces of angle iron. After I cut that five inch chunk, I'm going to use my annular cutter and I'm going to drill a hole and then four inches, another hole, and then I'll connect those to make a slot. And what this will allow, it allow this to move while being pinned down. And I can slide this up to a part that maybe a part stop right through here. And I can slide this up and over and I can catch it with a corner of this. So I plan on making a few different varieties of these slides or stops that are attached with my bolt. But these are the first ones I'm gonna make. I am gonna weld a cap on each end so it could be used as a push. So we're going to talk about repeatability again. Again, the fixture table helps us do that. But also, when we're going to drill uh, lots of parts, it's good to set up a stop. And I made this so that I could just flip this from one side to the other to do left side, right side. So just know that uh, you can take a lot of time and do things by hand. Uh, but you could also speed them up by creating uh, basically a jig or a fixture. Uh, it, and those can look any different ways. You know, this little bench vise, big table. Uh, don't feel like you need to slow down just because you're limited. Maybe try and problem solve on how to do something more efficiently or faster. Okay? 
pro tip. Since I've got eight of these to now notch, uh, we did one, and that turned out all right. It oblonged a little bit. Then we tried another, and that one actually fits the seven eighths really good. However, the one inch has a hard time. It fits the drilled holes just fine, but so I gotta. Uh, I don't know, maybe. I don't know. It's a little tight on the one side. And then we just now tried this method. And that's basically where I took two pieces of that two inch stuff and made it so I could clamp level. And then I used the side of my table to uh, help kind of keep that as a guide. And I took my grinder and I plunged down, cut it across. I think I like that method where I have it clamped in the table and I'm using the slats as my guide. So I'm gonna just keep working on that. So I got those holes to line up. And now I'm gonna take the grinder. All right, so we're almost all the way through. And I just take the, oh, I can't put that down there. Take that. And there we go. So, uh, yeah, it's not, uh, I wish it was faster. It's probably a better way. There's always a better way. Um, but I think for what I've got here in the shop, I think I'm going to be able to repeat these and get a fairly good, consistent outcome on it. Uh, I thought about <laughs> I thought about going up to the school and actually programming these slots on the CNC and plasma cutting them all out and then just pop 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 cut them up on the bandsaw after they were cut out. But then I was like, oh, that's kind of cheating, and I don't want to go up to the school right now and blah blah blah. So anywho, doing it all old school by hand. All right, so uh, we've got all our fixture pieces, um, ground down, cut up, and uh, edges smoothed over. 
So you'll be able to take what we're going to do. Just take those pieces of angle iron that we've got cut up. And we're just going to weld them in there. And then we'll be able to drop either a large or a small bolt down in. And then we'll get, I'm going to buy an Allen wrench. <laughs> I've been using uh, my uh, father's Sears pipe wrench. I mean, this thing is ancient because, you know, Sears ain't even around. So, uh, anywho, uh, now all we have to do is weld these up. And uh, once we weld them up, we'll be able to have these around on the table to help kind of slide back and forth. Now again, uh, I'll just demonstrate here. So if I've got something that, you know, comes between here and I, I can't quite get there, putting a piece of angle iron right here can actually reach this one and then push this over here can actually reach that one. So it allows me to kind of bridge this gap between two slots. A lot of the indexing tables or fabrication tables that have holes drilled in them, they're indexed every two inches. And even they have some sort of reach like this, where if it doesn't exactly line up on one of those points where you can fixture a point, you can put one of these sliding lockdowns in and it'll reach over to where your part needs to be and give you something to rest it against. Uh, there it is. So these are all it's all done. Yeah. So the next thing I need to do is some table legs and I've been waiting on material for like two weeks, maybe even longer. And so I finally got them. And so next week's video, we're going to do some slab table table legs and uh, we'll have to get those powder coated as well. And oh, man, we just got so many projects lined up that uh, there's gonna be good, some good ones coming up, some ones for the house and all that good stuff that I think uh, you guys could use for ideas for your future projects in class uh, or at home. And uh, these will definitely come in handy. I think we're done. <laughs>